Hello, here I am in Cannon Mills, um, which is one of the locations in the spellbinding secret of Avery Buckle, and I'm really keen to show you around and show you some of the things that inspired the story. Here are the gates at the entrance to the George V Park, where Avery and Lowe meet a character called Bean Near, who gives them some important clues on their journey. When I was working as an illustrator in Edinburgh, I used to walk through the park here to get to some meetings. Hidden right at the back of the park, beyond the children's play park, and behind the basketball hoop, there is a mysterious archway. I am outside the abandoned railway tunnel where Avery and Lowe sleep in the paddock. It is a real place, a real abandoned railway tunnel that used to go all the way to Waverley Station in the centre of Edinburgh. I feel as though, if I listen very carefully, I might hear the whistle of the old trains. There's not many of the original um, mill buildings left in Cannon Mills, but one of them you can see behind me with the red roof. When I came to Cannon Mills for my illustration meetings, I would walk out of the park gates and come to this building. I worked with some guys who very much liked to play jokes on people. They told me that Cannon Mills got its name from the pots, pans, cannons and kettles that were made here. When in actual fact, Cannon Mills is named for the Augustinian canons from Holyrood Abbey. A canon is a type of priest. They ran the mills here in the 12th century when Cannon Mills was just a village. Luckily I had a beady-eyed editor who got me to check my facts, otherwise it would be in the book now. It's hard to imagine it now as a peaceful rural location where mills ground flour for the city, powered by water from a loch here. Between 1847 and 1865 the loch was drained and the water diverted underneath the ground. It was this bit of history that gave me the idea for the Cranog, sleeping in its watery cavern deep underground. Just around the corner from the park is something else that appears in the book. Right, this is something that I'm super excited to show you. It's the real Baxter's Land stone. There really is an engraved stone saying Baxter's Land. And it was this stone that gave me the idea for the character Baxter, Baxter and all of his backstory and history. So, really excited to show you. Baxter was an old name for bakers. This stone relates to a law that forced bakers to come here to have their corn ground in the mills that used to operate here in the 17th century. Sorry about the sound of traffic. It just goes to show how much this area has changed. You can see on old maps how the area gradually became more and more built up. And that played an important part in the book too.